Praise Jesus. How are you? It's my joy that you are well. God has kept you and preserved you. You know, uh, most of the time when you go through the psalm, David would make the prayer, may the Lord preserve you. May, may you preserve my soul. And this morning, I'm having the same prayer for you, that may the Lord preserve your soul this morning. Amen. Uh, I want to encourage us from the book of Psalm. It's a Psalm of David, uh, 131. And this is what David writes. Lord, my heart is not proud. My eyes are not haughty. I don't concern myself with matters too great or too awesome for me to grasp. Instead, I have come and quieted myself like a wind child who, is, who no longer cries for its mother's milk. Yes, like a wind child is my soul within me. O oh Israel, put your hope in the Lord, now and always. It's a very short chapter. It only has three verses. And verse 1, he says, Lord, my heart is not proud. My eyes are not haughty. And I don't concern myself with matters too great or too awesome for me to grasp. Verse 2 says, instead, instead of being proud, I have quieted I have calmed and quieted myself like a wind child who no longer cries for its mother's milk. Yes, like a wind child is my soul within me. Verse 3, O Israel, put your hope, put your hope in the Lord now and always. Very interesting uh, psalm here. Apart from being the shortest, we can pick a few things that will help us uh, in, our, in our Christian walk. So the first thing that David says, he says, I am, I, you know, uh, my heart is not proud, okay? My eyes are not haughty. I don't concern myself with matters too great. And um, I'm, I'm seeing David seated somewhere. He has done some examination of his heart. He has had a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with himself. And he's come to a conclusion, my heart is not proud, you know? And David understood the effects of pride. You know, pride is one of the sins that would make God stand on your way as a block. You know, you're trying to advance, but you're not advancing simply because there's pride lacking inside your heart. You know how, how what James says? that the Lord opposes the proud. And David understood this, that God, not even Satan, you know, when Satan wants to make you destroyed, he will just, you know, sow the seeds of pride inside of you. And that time round, uh, this time round, it's not even him fighting you. God himself comes and stands in front of you because God opposes the proud. Now, David examines his heart and comes to a conclusion. My heart is not proud. My eyes are not haughty. I don't concern myself with the matters too great or too awesome for me to grasp. Now, this is it, yeah? Uh, if the Lord examines David's heart, you know, the Bible says that the heart of man is deceitful, you know, is, is, uh, is, is desperate and deceitful, and desperately wicked, is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Now, no, no. From, from David's, David's perspective, perspective, he sees himself as having attained some level of perfection. But in God's eyes, it's always different because, you know, we have to clothe ourselves with the righteousness of Christ. But my own righteousness, you know, standing in my own righteousness and saying, I am clean, I may not be perfect, I may not be clean, okay? But what am I trying to say here? How many of us have gotten to that place of, you know, examining our hearts? David had done a lot of combing in his heart, and his, his, he felt like he's already dealt with some level of pride. There is a level you can grow in your Christian walk where you feel the things I used to struggle with, I don't struggle with anymore. I used to be jealous. Nowadays, hmm, 
I really don't care. You know, you've already passed a particular milestone in your Christian walk. I used to speak lies even when it was not necessary. Nowadays, I, I do, but not as much as it used to be. So you are making progress in your Christian walk. You can examine your heart and say, hmm, there's a time I used to be greedy, you know? But nowadays, I am, but it's not as it used to be those days. We are still making progress in our Christian walk. So David has come to that place and he's saying, um, yes, uh, I've done a lot of combing. I'm not, I'm not as proud, you know, I'm not proud, my eyes are not proud, and again, this may represent different things, when he's talking about his heart, you know, this, this is your desire, do you have pride in your desire, what do you desire in other people, uh, do you desire to always be ahead of other people, you know, there's pride, there's an element of pride in that, my eyes are not proud, how do you see things? Is it from a pride, proud perspective or from a humble perspective? Do we see things from the perspective of God's word? Those are the things, yeah? And I don't concern myself with matters too great and too awesome for me to grasp. How is my conduct? How, is my, how are my affairs? How are my relationships? What are the friends I keep around? What's the basis of the friends I keep around? Do I associate with the people who have it or have made it and I don't concern myself with people who have nothing to offer, so to speak? Could it be there is pride in your conduct of your affairs? Away from all that, my, my assignment to you and to myself, can we sit down and examine our hearts? Lord, David would make a prayer. Read Psalm 17. Visit me in the night. Should you find anything that is not in line with you, purge it out with the high soap. And I pray that we, we get to that place. We make that prayer. Lord, visit me even now. Visit me in the night. Should you find pride, purge it out with the high soap. Okay? Verse 2 is interesting for me, and I think I'll conclude with that. Verse 2. I have come, instead, instead of being proud and instead of looking at what's working and not working, instead of being proud, um, what has David done? Instead, I have quieted, I have calmed and quieted my soul, like a wind child who no longer cries for its mother's milk. Yes, like a wind child is my soul within me. Well, I, uh, my son is about two years now, and, and I could see this child, um, when they want the mother's milk, nothing would stop him. <laughs> he would take anything apart from the mother's milk, especially when the mother started going to work. And when the mother comes, Anafuatana too with the mother, because all he wanted was the milk. And once he gets that milk, he, you know, at most of the times actually, he would sleep taking the mother's milk. And some, the psalmist is, like, you know, he's using such a, an analogy for us. And for me, it makes a whole lot of sense because I know my son and how he gets quiet, uh, how he's calmed down and he's quieted by the mother's milk. And it's enviable. If you see how that young boy, it's, 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 it's very enviable. And I pray, God, help me to quiet my soul. That, at that time, when, 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 um, when Miles is taking his, his milk from the mother, even if a bomb would explode next, he wouldn't care. He wouldn't be moved. He's so quieted. He's so calmed down. He's so lost, and in most, in most cases, he would end up sleeping there. And that's what David is likening to us calming our spirit. You know, we are so rested, we are so secured, we are so settled in God. We really don't care what's happening around, because our soul is so quieted and is so rested in God. And even in six years, like a wind child, is my son uh, within me. But the, the psalmist writes here and says, a child that has been wind, a child who is wind is a child who's past breastfeeding. Eh? 
you know, uh, he's no longer after the milk, but he's already been well fed and he's even sleeping. He's, he's been well fed. He no longer cries for the milk. But even so, I know a child, uh, there is a way that a breast milk has a way of calming them down. Oh Israel, I say, oh Gideon, oh John, oh James, whoever you are, put your name there and tell yourself, I put my hope in the Lord now and always. Don't put your hope in money. Don't hope your money. Don't put your hope in the government. Don't put your hope in in the west, in the east, in the south, wherever. Let's put our hope and trust in God because He cares for us. He is our God. Amen. Amen. Father, we love you, we exalt you, we adore you, we glorify you. None compares to you, none is alike unto you. This morning, we pray that you help us to quiet ourselves. You help us to calm ourselves like a well-wind child. A child who is well-fed of the mother's milk. A child who is well-wind, no longer desiring the mother's milk. May you help us, because we belong to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.